In its quest to provide an open forum for discussion of controversial issues, this station allows hosts and their guests to express themselves without any significant censorship. You're advised that any views expressed by the hosts or their guests are not necessarily the views of Tuggy Entertainment or its partners. Motherhood Incorporated proudly presents Military Mom Talk Radio live on toginet.com. Co-hosted by Robin Boyd and Sandra Beck, the owner of Motherhood Incorporated. Military Mom Talk Radio is here with a powerful platform for women to discuss their ideas, issues, and concerns with respect to the military lifestyle. Military Mom Talk Radio encourages you to share your experiences of being a military wife and mother. This show is dedicated to educating your family about the many resources that are available in both the public and private sector and we'll be sharing helpful information from women all over the world we'll cover everything military from helping a family member cope with post-traumatic stress disorder to navigating government programs dealing with family issues to the struggles of deployment along with being a working mother both in and out of the home this is military mom talk radio and here are your hosts sandra beck and robin boyd Military moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd. Robin, is that you making all that noise over there? I am, <laughs> I am so sorry. I apologize. I thought I was going to be really slick and get that done before the uh, before Joe's voiceover was done. I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm sitting still. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I just thought it was funny. I I just have to you know give you such a, a hard time. Um, Anytime I can, because it's really fun. Well, I got to tell you, now that my son works for, he doesn't work for the national NPR, but he works for our New Hampshire public radio now as uh, a voice uh, announcer. And so I really am feeling very conscientious whenever I don't either time something right or I'm not enunciating something properly because my son is so professional and I'm just so proud of him for doing what he's doing. He's doing really great. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, I wanted to share just something. I know we talk a lot about Marines on the show, and we talk about the Army, but the USS Fort Worth departs for commissioning today. That's the Navy's newest literal combat ship, uh, the USS Fort Worth. It's LCS-3. Uh, mm. It sailed away from the Naval Station in Mayport, Florida, where my dad was stationed, oh, wow. uh, September 13, to begin the final leg of its maiden voyage to its commissioning site in Galveston, Texas. Well, Godspeed. I know. I was all excited about that. I saw that in the news this morning. And uh, it was a nice break from all the uh, the other news with the clashes over the anti-Islam film. It seems to be mm. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. There's. I, I think this, especially in a political year, we just get so infiltrated with... And I don't want to say propaganda because it's not that it's – I think so many times propaganda implies that it's not true. But we get so many things that you do question, okay, is this credible? Is this not credible? Is this too much information? Is this information that makes uh, me need to find more information? It's overwhelming, and I think we really do have to almost – uh, we not, not wean ourselves away from the media, but we have to really be segmented as far as how much we expose ourselves to the media, because there oh, is yeah. so much. Yeah, I love these streams that I can I can just look at something online and be able to digest what I need to at the moment and get my headlines and and, and get the information it, that way. Because I'm, I, I guess news media, the the uh, national news media can sometimes get. I don't know, a little editorial, and I, I don't want all of the opinions sometimes. I just need the right. facts. <laughs> right. I want to know what happened. I don't want to know what you thought about it. I mean, that's to me for, you know, talk radio, for talk shows, or for news magazines. It's not for, for what I believe to be, you know, our national news. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's uh it is what it is, but thank goodness we have at least those options and thank goodness we have the freedom of having media delivered to us. We know that at least we can seek out that information and we have to be thankful for all those people who are who are uh, fighting for that freedom for us. So that that's, that's right. what we have to keep remembering. And you got some great things happening by you. Um, we did. We so had the best is. time. Last Thursday night, we had a family feud in our community. 
<laughs> I'm not. I, I don't know game shows very well. I do kind of know them, but uh, I'm not uh, really up on all the game shows as far as how they all work. I kind of know Jeopardy. I kind of know uh, Wheel of Fortune, but I didn't really know Wheel, uh, Family Feud very well. So all of our com- our community organizations got together as the quote unquote families, and we played a feud game. And the money raised at this event was to build uh, and expand our veterans park. We have a beautiful monument uh, near our church that was a beautiful brass plaque that all of the people who have died in previous wars are all engraved in this in this monument. So they refurbished the monument, repointed the stone, redid the brass on it, and now what they're doing is creating a little grassy area with a garden and a and a sign and a plaque and they're really making it a distinguished area of our community all because we got together and we had a little game show at the library it was a hoot we had more fun <laughs> the, the people in the in the audience got all hoorah and got it came with their noisemakers and their crazy costumes almost like that other game show that was oh price is right i mean <laughs> People just were were crazy. We had, I don't know, over 100 people crammed into the room at the library, and we just had a great time. So it doesn't take big corporate money to make something important like that happen in a community. So Well, and you guys to- had a lot of fun, too. Oh, my goodness, did we have fun. And, of course, if somebody g- d- didn't quite score quite right it's like good answer good answer just like you know you're at a, at a kids sock softball game or a baseball game and we just were so we were rooting for each other and we were hooting and hollering at people and it was just we had more fun and the town came together with such enthusiasm that everybody supported everybody else that both the heritage and historical society made the money that they needed to expand this park what a win-win situation it it was just wonderful. So I just thought I'd share that with everybody. That is so fun, Robin. That is so much fun. I wish I had been there. I would have been there like with some crazy dress on and big hat, a big noisemaker, maybe an air horn. <laughs> I know one, team, one team came up and they were all dressed like the Adams family. So they kept, you know, da-da-da-da. they kept coming every time they'd have a good answer. They would all do that funny little noise with the Adams family. I, th- those were the t- our town employees are at our town hall they just all dressed up and they were it was just so much fun but that's really to rally together for a cause like that to get a little silly to get you know take your shoes off kind of a thing and just really put some effort a very simple effort into something so important so i'm kind of proud of my town for that I think so. Well, I think it's, that's one of those, like, triple home one wins, you know, where yeah. anybody who attends, anybody who participates, the people who benefit from it, and the people who volunteer for it, it's like everybody wins. Everybody wins, and uh, it was it was successful. And we're already talking talking about next year, what we're going to do, and how what our next phase is on the project. And uh, so, yeah, we we really had a great time. So sometimes it's fun being in a in a smaller community. Sometimes it's harder to orchestrate that when you're in the center of Chicago or New York. New York City, but each of those cities have neighborhoods, and they can do those in in smaller neighborhoods too. It doesn't take big corporations. We we uh, as smaller uh, organizations can certainly make things happen. Absolutely, absolutely. I love the little grassroots in my town. My little my little horse town that I lived with uh, successfully blocked Target and Walmart and some other big big you know big places or big companies that wanted to build here because we didn't want the traffic, we didn't want the noise, we didn't want the dirt, and, you know, they would be taking part, you know, we're right next to the National Forest, so, mm-hmm. you know, drop a big Walmart there, you know, is just such an eyesore. It's like when I was at Mozart's house in, I think it was in Belgium, I forget where it was, or Brussels, I don't know, wherever Mozart lived, and my mom and I were so excited to see his house, and the bottom front had become a McDonald's, and then we went oh, up to gosh. that, like yeah. by the restroom. You know, there was an old door, and then we got to go up and see where Mozart composed. But, um, you know, it loses a little bit. Right, right. But I love when, when small towns rally. 
Right. Speaking of kids' games, you were telling me you were at one of your kids' games recently. Was it baseball that you were at? What were you at? Oh, recently? it was soccer. It's soccer season out here. Yeah. And, you know, I was there, Rob, and, uh, you know, and I was there a long time. My one son had a game from 9 to 10, and oh, then wow. my other one had a game from 11.15 to 12.45. So it was, okay. you know, I couldn't even leave. So I pitched a tent and um, put the kids in there, and it was very funny because it was 106. It was really hot and blistering sun, and we don't have much shade in our softball or our our soccer park Mm -hmm. and all the kids were running around and it was really interesting to me because the kids were playing their best in extreme heat and the parents were criticizing their kids they're like my kid didn't run fast enough oh so and so missed the ball you know all this stuff and I looked at the kids out there all dirty in the field and I thought about everything that's going on with the election coverage and all these people that are on the news media with their opinion on the war their opinion on the soldiers their opinion on anything And I wanted to read quickly um, Mm -hmm. something from Theodore Roosevelt, because I think it just makes a lot of sense for all of us. Um, So here it goes. This is a famous quote from Theodore Roosevelt. It's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly who errs, who comes up short again and again. Because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do these deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotion, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never know neither victory nor defeat. That's Theodore Roosevelt, and that's my comment to all the (laughs) reporters out there that are sitting in the cheap seats throwing pot shots at our men and women uh, serving overseas. Well, my name is Sandra Beck. I'm the host of Military Mom Talk Radio along with Robin Boy, and uh, we are going to um, we're going to welcome... Uh, an author coming uh, to the show after the break. Her name is Emma, and she has written a book about memory loss. And this is something that happens to a lot of our soldiers who have traumatic brain injuries. So you're going to want to stick around and hear what she has to say. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. The Mary Beth Wells Hour is a talk radio show where we reach out, reach deep, and talk about topics of substance. We'll cover points of interest, such as World War II and the Holocaust, the Vietnam War, the planets and the oceans, skydiving, rock climbing, and much, much more. Join me every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time as we delve into and discuss fascinating subjects. It's a program to pique your interest for sure. Why do I feel so lousy? Why are my medications working? Why can't my doctor figure me out? These are just a few of the questions Dr. Kevin Connors will be exploring in Dr. Kevin Connors Live on Tuggynet.com. The author of the book, Help My Body is Killing Me, solving the connections of autoimmune disease to thyroid problems, fibromyalgia, depression, ADD, ADHD, and more. He'll dig into these and many other conditions to dissect the mechanisms of your problems. Giving God the glory and looking for answers to make you look and feel better, to make you feel whole again. For more on him, his book, and the show, check out UpperRoomWellness.com. 
Never be satisfied with a diagnosis. There is always a reason behind it. And if you can alter the mechanisms that led you down your current path, we can change your future. It's Dr. Kevin Connors, live here on Togginet.com. Put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Help us out, put your name at the top of his list and a statue. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Well, welcome back, everyone. This is Robin Boyd with Sandra Beck today on Military Mom Talk Radio on a gorgeous fall day. The the leaves in New England are starting to blush, and uh, we're starting to get cooler weather. Although, Sandra, I know you are having some hot stuff going on out there. Um, we'll try and turn the turn the air mass around so you get a little bit of our cool air. <laughs> I would love that. I'm missing the fall already. Oh, gosh. Well, uh, Sandra, I have the great pleasure of introducing you and our listeners to a wonderful gal. Her name is Emma Donnelly. She's written a book that I have found so fascinating, and I am just thrilled to share this with you. She's written a book entitled The Reminder Book, and we'll talk to Emma about how this all came about, because when you stop and think about it, the premise is so simple, yet it has proven to have such value to its recipients and the people and loved ones around them. Emma, welcome to Military Mom Talk Radio. Robin, thank you so much, and my thanks to both you and Sandra for the honor to uh, be with you tonight on your wonderful radio program. I'm, I've been in the process of telling more and more people about Military Moms Radio, and uh, I'm really delighted to be here and, and to talk with this project and anything else you want to talk about. Talk about this and <laughs> whatever else may come up along the way. Well, that's one of the beauties of Military Mom Talk Radio. We just sit around the kitchen table virtually, and it's, uh, it's kind of nice to chat and uh, have a little girl talk, and, and we do have fun. Emma, this book was probably not the thing that you thought uh, 20 years ago you would be (laughs) focusing on. (laughs) Absolutely not. Um, This is something that arose out of uh, necessity, being the mother of invention, you might say. Um, My mom, who was in a little bit of a decline, she was uh, 88 at the time, and was having some physical problems. Her cognitive issues were were really fairly minimal until she ended up in the hospital for a few months, and that's when the decline really seems to start to happen in earnest, as it did in her case. And from the... um, acute care facility she went into rehab and of course like so many family members or loved ones who are the go-to person for someone who's ill I would receive those calls late in the evening when mom would be very upset and they wouldn't be able to settle her down and she would would cry and want to talk with me and they'd get me on the phone and I would talk with her and the overriding issue for her as her decline continued was her her cognitive um, decline the fact that her her memory loss was starting to increase she she was not an Alzheimer's diagnosis some um, had vascular dementia as a result of other physical and physiological problems but uh, invariably she would end up very confused if we were not right there with her as Mm -hmm. would happen late in the evening. And when I would get those calls, uh, I'm sure both of you can imagine, and your listening audience as well, how upsetting it is to hear a loved one cry on the other end of the phone and to not be able to be right there with them and to to feel a little bit um, bewildered and overwhelmed, perhaps, in terms of trying to provide comfort to them over the phone. Um, it was one of those evenings that I was particularly frustrated. I got my mom settled down. I told her we'd be back in the morning. She just had to go to bed and go to sleep. And when she woke up, we would be there. And she did settle down. But that one night, I went on the computer, and I was determined to find a resource, something personal for someone in such a situation, something for the person who is himself or herself suffering from this kind of cognitive decline. And I have to tell you, I I would have paid any amount of money 
but I was dismayed to find that there was nothing like that out there. What I did find is there are innumerable, a plethora of resources out there for people who are actually providing care, whether it's a loved one, family member, mm-hmm. clinician, whatever. But I could find nothing that was con- or had been conceived that would speak to the individual who was having these problems. So I decided the next day, well, I'm going to create something myself for her, and um, I did that. It was it was very primitive. It was homemade, if you will. Yeah. And I recall the first day that I took it to the rehab slash nursing home to mom. Uh, the caregivers there said, wow, this is really a great idea, and you should really think about doing something with this. Of course, mom was my first priority, and this became a companion, this little book, of a very primitive book, again, of handwritten reminders and reflections that she could refer to either if it's if it was sitting there in front of her based on her own curiosity or that she mm-hmm. could be prompted, as she often was, by the uh, nurses in the nursing home to to look at it, particularly if she was anxious about something and they couldn't get right to her. Sure. So sure. it became a nice resource, and um, it, it is basically um, in in her memory that the uh, ultimately published uh, version of what we now know to be the Reminder Book was published. Now, let's describe to everyone, this is, if you will, envision the index cards, and I'm sure that's probably what you started out with, mm-hmm. With, mm-hmm. with simple statements on them. Each card has a different single statement on it. Um, I am safe. I am with people who care about me. I, am, I can ask for help if, I'm, if I can't remember where I put something. Mm-hmm. Each card card has an affirmation on it and this is on a flip book situation it's on a spiral bound book so that an individual can easily hold it I I remember when you were first developing this size was definitely an issue and the feel of the paper and the size of of the fonts and it's very easy to flip this book it's not heavy but each page has something unique that's going to help this person kind of come back or uh, reaffirm what they might not be comfortable remembering. Absolutely. When when I first wrote the book, obviously the first step was to conceive the, the content, the words, the affirmations, reflections, or reminders. And after having done that, I thought really the, the, the hardest part of the project was over. And I soon discovered as the project evolved that that was not the case because then I had to start thinking out of the box in terms of how to make this resource as physically conducive to the needs of the user as possible. So you're right, Robin, uh, the size was an issue. The fact that I wanted to make sure that it would lie flat, so if someone only had the use of one hand or, or say, a few fingers on one hand, they would still be able to turn the pages without having to use both hands. Um, the, the print, as um, you know, is only on one side of each page. And it was devised originally that way so that if family members or caregivers wanted to include other reminders, it could be done on the back of mm-hmm. one of those pages. Pages. So it, it, there were lots of components that I really had to consider before it actually went to print. And certainly size, um, the, the formatting of the book, um, the, the artwork and making it visually uh, interesting and um, making sure that the way it was written, that, that the sentences were short enough for someone who, who might be having some cognitive issues. And keeping in mind, when, when I first did this, it was originally intended for primarily the elderly in transition, um, mm-hmm. again, modeled after my mother's situation and how I felt she could be she could be um, helped in in her decline. But um, now it's taken on sort of new life and new versatility. But, yes, a, a lot of that had to go into the design mm-hmm. of the book. Yeah. And as you say, into more versatility, of course, we are realizing that people with particular traumatic brain injury or even with 
PTSD situations, they are just needing, and it, these situations could be very temporary. They, in, in an elder uh, geriatric environment, it may be permanent because obviously this journey is uh, probably not going to bring them back, but at least with, say, a brain injury or whatnot, there is the potential that these affirmations are going to help ground them so that uh, their other recoveries uh, efforts are going to be a little more, I guess, easier to, to handle or easier to process. Exactly. I can only imagine, yeah. Well, there are, as we know, all different shades of needs when it comes to cognitive issues, but I think the bottom line... Um, hope for me in doing this project is to address a quality of life issue um, mm-hmm. no matter what the stage might be of someone's decline or the, you know their, their cognitive situation I think it all boils down to what can we do to improve the quality of life however long that might be and whatever that might entail how can we make it better so that they're not as afraid so that they are reassured so that they do have hope so that they can think more positively about their situation. And uh, that really was the impetus um, in large part for the ultimate publication of the book. And I think what's nice, too, is that it is so easily customizable in that someone could write, Mary will return in the morning or every in the morning, or you can always call John if you need help. The pages are such that you can certainly write on each page, but as you say, you have these blank areas as well that it can be easily customizable. Exactly. That was intended in the first print. Um, I will tell you in the listening audience that there is a second version of the reminder book soon to be available. It's it's in the, the print and production process right now. And what we've tried to do is make that even more versatile uh, by telling people how to remove the spiral binding so that they can organize the book however they want and include more blank pages if they want them to add new mm-hmm. reminders. So the, we can talk a little bit more about the versatility as we go along and specifically how it might relate to those with traumatic brain injury or PTSD. Sure. This is so exciting, Emma. Uh, we're speaking today with Emma Donnelly. She's the author of The Reminder Book, and you can find more information about this at her website, www.theremindersbook.com. We're going to have Emma stay with us for a little bit longer. We've got a break coming up, and we will catch you on the other side at Military Mom Talk Radio. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. Join us for Self-Aid Success Stories with Helen Wu. Wednesday nights at 10, 9 central on toginet.com. Helen Wu was born and raised in San Francisco's Chinatown. And after a very difficult upbringing, fighting depression, abuse, and addictions, she finally finds herself genuinely happy inside and out. Helen believes in taking our positive thinking and doing something positive to achieve a positive outcome. She's here to make a positive difference in your life, to be your game changer, your aha moment mentor. She's ready to help both men and women get into a better place. Helen Wu is also the author of Self-Aid Success Stories, 25 Success Stories from Successful Entrepreneurs. Inspired by Ellen DeGeneres, Helen wants the world to know that just because we find ourselves in a difficult situation doesn't mean we have to stay there. We can aid ourselves to a better life. So join us for Self-Aid Success Stories with Helen Wu. Wednesday nights at 10, 9 central on toginet.com. Second chances. We all deserve them. And we are all worthy of them. Second Chances with your host, Midge Noble. Thursdays at 8 p.m. Central on TogiNet is like coming home to warm, fresh-baked cookies, a hug from Grandma, or an enthusiastic greeting from your dog. Second Chances, hosted by Midge Noble, a licensed professional counselor, is affirming, warm, genuine, validating, and thought-provoking. Second Chances is a place to be heard, a place to laugh, a place to cry, and a place to be seen. 
For more on Midge and Second Chances, check out MidgeNobleSecondChances.com. Then be a part of a show that will change how you think, how you feel, and what you do. Give yourself the gift of Second Chances and see where it will take you. So take a deep breath, open your heart, open your mind, and join host Midge Noble for Second Chances. Thursdays at 8 p.m. Central on toginet.com. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Welcome back, everyone. We're here today, uh, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd, with Emma Donnelly. Uh, she is from New Hampshire, and she is the author of a wonderful book called The Reminder Book. And we're kind of brainstorming in the chat area here of all the different ways that one could use this reminder book. <laughs> because as much as this was developed for uh, an elder, a geriatric mm-hmm. A person uh, with some cognitive decline, we could foresee this being used by children who need similar affirmations. We could see it from soldiers who are going through some uh, difficulties, uh, either uh, physically or internally, that need some affirmations. This has such potential, Emma. You know, it, it really has taken on a life of its own, and the interest uh, from people way beyond my little arena here and my little corner of the world with the reminder book is is certainly growing all the time. Um, With specific regard to military families and a loved one who perhaps um, has either been injured, who has suffered a traumatic brain injury, or perhaps somebody who's suffering the effects of PTSD, Um, one of the things that I was particularly concerned about when I read the stats are the suicide rates that we're seeing from in, in the realm of the men and women coming back from active mm-hmm. duty. And it was around that time that I was getting some of that information that I started to give some thought to how I might adapt the reminder book yet again to address some of those specific needs. So eventually what I hope to do is collaborate with some other folks who have far more knowledge and information about um, those sorts of uh, problems, be they emotional or, or physical, um, collaborate with them to perhaps cr- perhaps create an addendum that could be added into the book. But in the meantime, as it stands now, it does have great versatility and mm-hmm. could easily be used by any military family for a loved one who is dealing with either a physical injury or an emotional or um, a PTSD kind of um, syndrome. And because it's on a spiral uh, binding, it's so easy to remove a page if a certain affirmation is really not applicable, if if it refers to either a facility or a nursing home or something like that. And I don't think it actually ever says nursing home on any – it's very vague in that regard – but those pages can simply be removed. Absolutely. It was written initially with focus for the highest level of care that an elder in transition might be in, that being nursing home slash long-term care. So in creating the content, I was very mindful about as many of the situations or issues as they might confront in that environment. And then I started working my way back to the more universal or um, generic, if you will, kinds of uh, reflections and affirmations. So it's really a compilation of both. And yes, by taking the taking the spiral off the book, pages can be removed. Page blank pages that are included in the uh, what will be the newer version can be used for new reminders. They could be used for, say, children's artwork, um, mm-hmm. additional photo sleeves. There are photo sleeves included at the back of the book 
they are part of the book when it's purchased initially, but um, we're also going to make extra pages and extra photo sleeves available. And even the photo sleeves could be interdispersed bet- in between the pages in the middle of the book as, as a family member or loved one who would set the book up for the user might like to do. Hmm. I have a question um, with respect to this, because it reminds me of something similar, this is Sandra, by the way, that we did when my mom was sick with my little one, Um, you know, he was only three, and so we had pictures and, you know, pictures of them together, pictures, you know, just a lot of stuff and little things we could read to him um, to help him, because even though he's three, he has, it's similar to, (laughs) he has short-term memory loss, you know, he wouldn't remember as he grows, and this, we thought, was a good memory aid, is this something that could be also modified for children whose parents are on deployment, little ones, you know, that could be made into a little book um, that could contain affirmations, you know, that could contain stories or contain a message from daddy or mommy and then show put pictures in? I, I think it could be, but to be perfectly honest, Sandra, I think that would take some doing in terms of the number of extra blank pages and photo sleeves that a family would require. Um, the, most of the content is specific to the individual who's actually uh, suffering with the disorder or challenged by the disorder. Um, while it could be adapted for another audience, particularly children, I think it would take some doing in terms of using the basic format, removing most of the pages because they really wouldn't apply to, say, a child or a youngster, and incorporating blank pages with reminders and concepts that their loved ones would feel is important to them and to reassure them of of what is going on. So it could be, but it would take a little bit of doing. What I think is we might be on to the second kind of reminder book. Maybe you've given me an idea for something yet to come because certainly for military families, reassuring children would be huge and and, uh, a very worthwhile project. I think the latter is definitely in order, <laughs> Emma. I think we need to start putting that on the drafting board right now. <laughs> okay, I'll have to thank Sandra for that if and when it comes to pass because, um, uh, again, while it has taken on, it has so much universal application for for adults who are confronted with these challenges, I think um, – I'd sort of have to, as you say, go back to the drawing board to revamp it for children, but I think it could easily be done. And I know that there are a wealth of little books, very helpful books out there for children whose families are dealing with these kinds of issues, deployment and, and you know, uh, mom or dad who, who have been injured. So that, of course, is always another resource for people. But mm-hmm. Sure, sure, but I like that about. you put your stuff in there, like you put personal things in there. That's the thing that made me wonder and made me get all excited because I've read a lot of deployment kids' books out there, and they're good, and they, they're they helpful, but they show, you know, dad on deployment may not look like my dad. You know, it's one of those things where it's a lot different when it's like, oh, here's your good night letter from daddy. Here's his photo. You know, here's a picture that you drew of you and daddy, and, you know, just, you know, I don't know, I'm not a shrink, but, but the that it's personalized. Well, you, everything that you're saying here with regard to what you would include for children is is right on target in terms of what I did with the content specific to an adult audience. Um, so, yeah, you're you're right there with the with the concepts and the kinds of simple and personalized. Uh, reassurances that would be great for kids. I will also say, and I don't know if we touched on this yet, is that the book is designed to be fully personalized for the user. In fact, the first couple of pages of the book, uh, you, the, loved, the caregiver or loved one who'd be setting the book up for the user would, in fact, print their name to identify that this is, say, Walter's or Sally's reminder book. And then there's also a location page that reminds the user, I am at whatever location in whatever city or town, and I am near my family and friends, and they know that I am here. What I would suggest to military families, if they wanted to adapt the reminder book for children, is to use the existing verbiage as a model, but to turn it around to for the eyes and ears and, and consumption of a child, and that could easily be done. 
Yeah. In, in other words, speak. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, put it in kids speak. Exactly. Read it as an adult and put it in kids speak. Every parent knows how to do that. Exactly. Yeah, and I think I think there's so much potential to have have another uh, edition of the reminder book coming um, uh, th- for kids because it it the one thing that I have to say about the reminder book as much as there are other publications out there for kids they're more of a storybook uh, format they're not in this real cool flip book kind of format. So I can only see that this ha- has potential down the road, Emma, um, for, for, some, for, for more versions. <laughs> I, I think you're right. I th- and you make a good point because isn't it interesting that when I, prior to conceiving the concept for the book, I was frustrated by the fact that all, most of the information out there was, uh, you know, resource related for caregivers or clinicians. And when you talk about the more general uh, books for kids, say, dealing with military issues, it's not as personal to them because it's about someone else. So Mm -hmm. your point, Robin, is so well taken. And Sandra's, too, that um, having that personalized concept that this is re- this is specific to me and my dad or me and my mom or me and my uncle or whomever mm-hmm. the the military person might be i think does add a huge amount of of interest and reassurance because the more specific it can be to the issues that these these families are confronting the better off everybody is And that was another interesting thing that we found with the book, and I'll just be quick on this point, is that once I created it for my mom, it took on a new dimension because my family started to use it as a great collaborative tool because so many people have difficulty dealing with these kinds of issues, whether Mm. it's the elderly, aging, death and dying, that sort of thing, or perhaps military families who are confronted with physical injuries, uh, PTSD. So it becomes and can become a great collaborative tool, almost giving people permission. You know, it's amazing and wonderful the effect that something like this has on everybody who's involved in the process. It really does. And on the other side of the break, Emma, I want to talk a little bit about what, since your uh, release of this book, what impact it has had in other facilities and some of the feedback that you've sure. gotten. We're here with Emma Donnelly today, the author of The Reminder Book. You can find out more about it at www.thereminderbook.com. And if you've missed any portion of this show or any of our other shows, always find it either on here, the token. Uh, network page. You can find us at militarymomtalkradio.com. You can always find our podcasts at iTunes. Uh, and as as we are well into the throes of three years, we've got lots of podcasts out there. So I do hope that you are uh, staying tuned today as as you are always. We appreciate you, you tuning in. We'll be back with Emma Donnelly in just a moment. Are you a military mom looking for help in dealing with the system? Keeping the home fires burning? Well, that's what we're here for. It's Military Mom Talk Radio with Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. And we'll be right back after these. What's ideal for you? Really, what's ideal for you? Being who you are, doing what you love, and getting out and about with friends. What's ideal for you? With your host, Janice Christopher, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Central here on the Rockstar Radio Network. And it all starts with Janice doing just that. Then being open, curious, authentic, and living her life on a quest to discover everything that could possibly make life ideal. Check out the website, whatsidealforyou.com. Studies have shown that 80% of Americans, and probably everyone else too, dislike their work. 80%. The mission then is to turn that passion statistic around. To show how it is possible to live your passions and make a living. Or live your passions so that you'll be able to mush through your job until you can change it. And watch life's magic begin to happen. It's What's Ideal for You with your host Janice Christopher. Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. Central on the Rockstar Radio Network. 
What time is it? It's MILF and Cookies time. Join the rowdy and fun world of Shannon and Amy, two moms I'd like to Facebook, and catch a glimpse of these two best friends as they enjoy their MILF status and devise ways to keep it. They, along with their special guests, will happily reveal their best kept secrets on how to feel beautiful from the inside out. Some of the fun segments include Happy Hour with Skinny Girl Margaritas, Confessions of a Bad Eater, Making Your Own Money is So Hot, Tips for Keeping Your Milk Status, and Don't Forget the Cookies. We're still moms after all, and best friends are like a good brawl. They never leave you hanging. Shannon represents the ladies in their 40s and is also a woman who came into her cool status late in life after a good long run with a glee club. Amy, on the other hand, is walking the 30 set and as a high school cheerleader has pretty much been cool her whole life. Hook up with host Shannon and Amy every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Central for Filth and Cookies here on the Rockstar Radio Network. Put a boot in your ass, it's the American way. Help us Sam, put your name at the top of his list and a statue. Welcome back to Military Mom Talk Radio on toginet.com. Covering topics to help on the home front with help from those who know how the system works and how to work the system. It's more fun than a sale at the BX. Now let's get back to it. It's Military Mom Talk Radio. Here again are your hosts, Sandra Beck and Robin Boyd. Hey, Military Moms, this is Sandra Beck, and I'm here with Robin Boyd. Boy, I just think I'm going to need the reminder book for me to get to <laughs> I was thinking about that. I need one for the kitchen, one for my office, one for the kids' room. Almost like uh, our glasses, our reading glasses. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, we're here today with Emma Donnelly. She is author of the Reminder Book. I think it's such a great, it's so important. I had a uh, grandparent that suffered from short-term memory loss and dementia, and actually a little brother, uh, my NASA rocket scientist brother, uh, actually suffers from short-term memory loss, and we've all had to cope over the years to help him. You know, I was the first one to get him a day planner and write everybody's birthdays in a week before. So, you know, that could be done. And, I mean, it's amazing what families will do to help someone um, old or young uh, with memory loss. And uh, and I think at different times in our life I was thinking about, while my mom was on chemo, Rob, her, her memory was she was having a really hard time remembering, you know, with a lot okay. of the drugs that were happening. And, you know, I just can see so many applications for this through illness, through injury, through PTSD, through uh, TBIs, uh, family members. I mean, it's just, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's just important. I don't know what I was going to put it. It's, it's so <laughs> obvious that we wouldn't have this already. You know, I always think of these ideas that people come up with that are so good. And, you know, you just look at this and go, oh, a reminder book. Wow, that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> and <laughs> that's, even more I think, so- what's so incredulous about this is that it is so simple when you look at the book and hold it that it hadn't been developed. I, I'm one for Post-its. I, you should see my desk sometimes. I have got a gazillion Post-its all over the place that is sort of my reminder book but to have this in such an easy format um it's sort of like wow yeah we we should have had something like this but thank goodness emma did did come up with it and and it's out there well again necessity is the mother of invention but one of the things i think i'm most proud of with the book is that it addresses more than just practical reminders. Reminding someone and helping them to remember or reassuring them of how, of how you might or how they might handle a situation when they're having a memory issue. That is certainly one thing and it's a very legitimate issue to address. But what I'm particularly proud of is that, and this was by design, the reminder book is intended to be as much of an emotional support and resource for someone who doesn't just need a practical reminder, but in their frustration or sadness or upset that they can't remember or feeling that they they have no more contribution to make because they're having these issues or not feeling good about life, maybe feeling depressed. The intermittent affirmations and reflections are intended to provide hope, provide faith, you know, give, give them an understanding that 
just because they're suffering with memory loss or whatever the issue might be doesn't mean that they can't still have quality of life, that they don't still have a purpose in life and, you know, their happiness. I mean, that, that's the bottom line, whatever anyone's situation. So um, yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of that, and that is what is most important to me each time I, I do a re- reprint of this book is to make sure that that's addressed. Now, tell us a little, Emma, about some of the feedback that you've gotten, because it has been, it was 2007, do I recall, that it, you developed this? Well, actually, it was um, first published in, I worked on it for 2008, after my okay. mother came home to live with me and ultimately passed away. Then the first edition was published in 2009. Mm-hmm. Um, the feedback has really been rewarding and and phenomenal. Of course, I am one person here, and I am wearing all the hats. I am the author, the creator, the designer, and the self-publisher. So, Mm -hmm. um, Plus, I've had a full-time career from which I've just recently retired after 34 years. Mm -hmm. So all this was happening at the time that I was working full-time and doing volunteer activities and creating the book. So, um, And we should probably say what kind of career. You were a flight attendant. Is that the terminal? Yes, I have and, been a flight attendant for 33 so, and a half years, and I just retired. Which means you were international. You, you would be saying, oh, I'm hopping over to Japan. I'll be back <laughs> on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, when, when you're on the inside of that industry, it sounds very strange to other people, but it wasn't uncommon when my husband was still living. I, I've been widowed for many years to, to say, do you want to come and have dinner with me tonight in Oklahoma City or wherever yeah. I might have been laying over? So, yeah, that did sound and, and does still sound a little strange to people if I say, oh, I'm going off to Beijing for two or three days. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. In the industry. But in all of that time, all of this was being developed, <laughs> despite the fact that you were you were not just bi coastal; you were bi continental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it it it's been a huge challenge. But in terms of your question, um, it, you know about feedback. The website has some testimonials on there, and we're about to revamp the website to include the the other option, the other format, at which time we'll be adding some additional testimonials. But I've also had a tremendous number of inquiries. I've recently had some from various VA offices throughout the country expressing interest um, in using the book. I've been contacted by people who had seen the book maybe in a bookshop or a, a hospital gift shop or whatever, and um, who called to inquire about whether it could be used for people with brain injury. And so that sort of developed as we went along. I've also had feedback from people who are not in cognitive decline, who may be aging a little bit, but who tell me they have their own copy and they read it every day because mm. the reminders in here are universal particularly for aging. Um, I think aging and the culture of aging in our country especially is is not necessarily conducive to the best quality of life for, for um, our elders. And um, I think the same maybe could be said of, of folks who, who have other disabilities. So um, the feedback has been tremendous. I've also been invited to do uh, Schwartz rounds which um, is a program that was developed specifically for families going through cancer treatment situations, Mm -hmm. but they've also started to sort of segue into other areas, and I've been invited to speak to uh, clinicians and groups in hospitals about the reminder book and how it can be used on the floor in the hospital for either geriatric care or for um, those going through cancer treatment. So, as I say, it really has taken on a life of its own. And it has. It's, and the uh, ele- and the, this element of uh, it being somewhat universally used, it, so many times it's all well and good for the family members to be able to say, oh, this is a picture of Mary or this is a picture of John. 
clinicians may come and go and clinicians may not be the same for a particular individual. Exactly. So if clinicians are involved with a patient uh, periodically, they may not know, oh, this, this patient has three daughters or this patient has one daughter living here and another daughter living some, somewhere else. This reminder book really serves as a guide for the caretakers as well, it's which is just so collaborative. Truthful. Yes. Yeah. When, you, when you consider that triangle between patient, caregiver, and, and loved one, or patient, mm-hmm. uh, clinical caregiver, and loved one, and, and you consider, you know, sort of the arrows back and forth along the lines of that triangle, mm-hmm. all of that give and take and all of that feedback and communication is so important with quality of life of the person around whom this triangle, you know, or for whom this triangle is created. And I think... The Reminder Book provides an opportunity, as you say, Robin, for caregivers to learn more about the person that they're caring for and therefore being able to address their needs in a more specific and helpful way. So that's another collaborative um, Especially aspect. if there are some language barriers, for, temp, even if it's just temporarily uh, a language difficulty, at least the caretaker can flip through your book and say, oh, okay, this is what this person is trying to tell me or this is what what they are uncomfortable about. It's it's a wonderful resource. Emma, I, I, I am just so excited to talk to you every time about hearing more and more effects that the Reminder Book has had. Uh, once again, tell everybody where we can find more about you. Uh, information about me is available on the website. The website mm-hmm. is www.thereminderbook.com. The book also at the back tells people a little bit about me and provides some contact information so that if anyone is uncertain as to how to use the book, put the book together, they have any specific questions about how they can make it a better resource for people, they they have my direct contact number and uh, mailing address there. But I would say most of the information is available online at the website. And for any of your listeners who might go there and have a question, maybe they might need some additional information before even considering making a purchase, they certainly should be encouraged to give me a call. I can, in fact, I I have no problem putting the phone number out there if that's permissible. Go for it. Yep. And that's a New Hampshire contact number at area code 603-396-0426. And if I'm not available, please, anybody feel free to leave a message. I'm more than happy to address any questions or issues uh, or discuss the project with anyone. Wonderful. Emma Donnelly, thank you so much. This has been such a pleasure. Robin and Sandra, thank you so much. You're you're great host, or should I say hostesses <laughs> on, on the program, and I can't wait to get feedback from other people that I've told about um, not just the Military Moms program, but just token up programming in general. I wish all of you the very, very best of everything. Thank and you. thanks so much for giving me a forum <laughs> to try to help those who could benefit by uh, my project. I appreciate thanks it. Thanks so much. Next week, everyone, we've got Debbie Gregory coming from the Veteran and Military Business Owners Association. Lots to hear from Debbie Gregory. We'll have Autumn Arnold back next week talking about diet, fitness, and just making the best of everything. And Marcella Stretch is is due back with us. We love it when Marcella comes. She is the founder and uh, head spokesperson of... Uh, parents of deployed service members. We love that Facebook group. If you haven't found it yet, be sure to go to Facebook and search Parents of Deployed Service Members. What a great group they are. Uh, For Sandra Beck, this is Robin Boyd. We always enjoy having you with us. Be sure to find us on iTunes. Be sure to find us right here. As Emma was just saying, we have a great network of of shows here on Toganet, the best family around (laughs) right here on Toganet. And uh, do find us at Military Mom Talk Radio. For Sandra Beck, this is Robin Boyd. Have a great week, everyone. 